To discuss the president's remarks, we go to Washington, D.C., to Gareth Porter, historian, investigative journalist specializing in U.S. national security policy. Your assessment of President Obama's announcement last night. Oh, I think there are two major uh, storylines here about his speech. First, he made it clear that he had leaned very sharply in favor of the interests of the Pentagon and the military as opposed to the interests or the views of those in his own administration who believed that we needed to save a lot more money uh, from this war by uh, withdrawing troops much faster, particularly the, uh, the increment uh, called the surge uh, starting uh, in 2010. Uh, he basically gave General Petraeus most of what he wanted. Uh, despite the fact that you're going to hear uh, cries of pain from supporters of the military that he didn't get everything, uh, he wanted two full years of combat uh, against the Taliban with the vast majority of the surge troops. He got one year and eight months, which uh, obviously uh, is uh, roughly 80 percent of what he asked for. On the other hand, I think uh, the, uh, the what I call the domestic faction of the Obama administration really lost out. They had hoped that the full increment, the, the surge increment of troops, 33,000, would be withdrawn this year, before the end of the year. Uh, and, and that was clearly a very major disappointment. I think the second uh, storyline is equally important, and that is that Obama likened the what he called the responsible withdrawal from Afghanistan to what has been done in Iraq. And of course, that uh, reminds us that what the president did in Iraq was to promise to withdraw combat troops, uh, combat brigades, while in fact leaving them there well beyond the date that they were supposed to be withdrawn. So I think we can look forward to, you know, beyond uh, 2012, having combat troops uh, continue to to carry out the war uh, while the president is talking about withdrawing them. I think we're in for a, a, a repeat of the Iraq experience there. And, and uh, Gareth Porter, isn't this an attempt by the president basically to control the narrative on this, to declare mission accomplished when the, the reality is that Afghanistan still is a, a extremely uh, dangerous place and that the efforts of the administration to, quote, pacify the country have not succeeded? And then, two, to claim that the troops have been withdrawn when they are going to be leaving a significant number of troops there for years to come. Well, absolutely. There's an effort here to create a, a narrative that, as he put it, the war is receding, the tide of war is receding, when in fact nothing of the sort is happening. I mean, clearly the Taliban are carrying out uh, counter uh, counterattacks uh, this year and will do so again next year. Uh, that's not going to come to an end. Uh, his his vague language in this regard uh, is is I'm afraid going to uh, come back to bite him because. Uh, it's going to become clear that he couldn't deliver on that uh, promise of, of uh, sort of a, a, an ebbing of the tide of war. And, and you've, you've done uh, research into the claims of General Pet uh, Petraeus uh, back last, late last year about the number of Taliban uh, killed or captured. Could you talk about that? Yes, this is uh, really an important part of the uh, narrative that uh, General Petraeus has been very successful in creating about the success of the Special Operations Forces in Afghanistan, uh, in which he claimed that over a 90-day period, this was the claim in um, uh, August of 2010, that over a 90-day period the Special Operations Forces had actually captured 1,355 rank-and-file Taliban. Now, that was in addition to claims of killing uh, one, more than 1,000 Taliban rank-and-file and capturing and killing 356 middle- and high-ranking Taliban. Now, most of those claims, the claims about uh, uh, killing of a Taliban, could not be fact-checked, but there was a way to fact-check the claim of capturing that many Taliban. And what I did was to obtain a, an unclassified uh, paper uh, from the uh, task force responsible for detention affairs in 
uh, in Afghanistan Task Force 435, which showed the monthly intake and release of prisoners uh, to and from the main detention center at the Bagram Air Base called Parwan. And what it showed was that only 270 uh, Afghans were admitted uh, as uh, supposed Taliban into the detention facil facility during those 90 days. Uh, and so this is uh, roughly 20% of the uh, 1,355 claimed uh, Taliban captives who turned out to be uh, who, who were not found to be civilians just in the, pa in the first few days. But then in subsequent months, another uh, couple of hundred uh, were released from the uh, detention facility. Uh, and in the end, about 90 percent of those claimed to be captive Taliban were in fact found to be civilians. And Gareth Porter, we've been reporting for quite a while that the U.S. is talking with the Taliban. Well, in a speech, President Obama indicated the U.S. might negotiate with the Taliban to enable a lasting solution to the conflict in Afghanistan. We do know that peace cannot come to a land that has known so much war without a political settlement. So as we strengthen the Afghan government and security forces, America will join initiatives that reconcile the Afghan people, including the Taliban. Our position on these talks is clear. They must be led by the Afghan government, and those who want to be a part of a peaceful Afghanistan must break from al-Qaeda, abandon violence, and abide by the Afghan constitution. But in part because of our military effort, we have reason to believe that progress can be made. Gareth Porter, your quick response. Yeah, this is a, a, a statement of policy that uh, essentially puts forward totally unrealistic negotiating aims. No one, no independent analyst of the Taliban really believes that they are going to cave in to pressure from the U.S. military to sit down and, and negotiate an agreement without a commitment by the United States in advance to a timetable for withdrawal. Now, this, of course, is exactly what the Obama administration refuses to provide. So this really reminds me, uh, more than anything else, of the Lyndon Johnson administration's position on negotiations in the spring of uh, 1965, before uh, there was any realism in the U.S. position at all.